Well, I guess we should be going now. Promise me you'll keep in touch. You're the scariest bunch of monsters I have ever met. Did you see the idiom? Listen, I don't know what you're doing skulking around during daylight hours, but I don't want any trouble in here. So hit the road. I'm not looking for any trouble either, sir. How about that time? There were idiomatic phrases in both of those clips. That's what our channel is all about. Idiomatic phrases. Here is the index of the phrases for this group one video. Great. Now let's start analyzing idiomatic phrases. Our first phrase is an idiom. It's called, on the other hand. This idiom is used to introduce or compare two different situations or ideas. For example, I would love to travel to China, but on the other hand, going to Mexico is much closer and easier to arrange. Occasionally, you might hear this idiom be preceded by, on one hand. To restate the previous example, on one hand, I would love to go to China, but on the other hand, going to Mexico is much closer and easier to arrange. Okay, here are three different examples from three different movies. Stop it! So you'd hammer one of nature's innocent creatures. What? No, I, I would never hit this little guy. You, on the other hand, I would gladly pound you and your mustache into the ground. In this clip, the Lorax falsely accuses Ted of trying to hit one of the innocent creatures of the forest. Ted was not trying to do this, and he tells the animals that this is not true. He then looks at the Lorax and says, You, on the other hand, I would gladly pound you. Ted is saying that he would not hit an innocent creature, but in comparison, he would absolutely be willing to hit the Lorax, because he just lied. Uh, that book's really not great. Just in case, you know, browsing turned to buy, uh, you'd be wasting your money. But if it's turkey you're interested in, um, this one, on the other hand, is very good. Um... In this clip, Anna, who is a movie star, is shopping in William's little bookstore. William sees Anna looking at a travel book that he feels is not very good. He tells her that she would be wasting her time if she bought that book. He shows her a different book and says, this one, on the other hand, is very good. He's saying that choosing this book would be a better option. I think the man who wrote it has actually been to Turkey. Yes, Superman, double jeopardy. Even you, with your great speed, couldn't stop both of them. While I, on the other hand, could stop them with my detonator. In this clip, Luther has carefully planned out an attack. He tells Superman that there are two rockets with dangerous chemicals currently in the air and that even he can't stop both of them. He says that, on the other hand, only he, Luther, has the power to stop the rockets using his detonator. Superman realizes that Luther is right. He grabs Luther and says, where is the detonator? All right, Luther, where is it? Where's the detonator? Nobody ever robs restaurants. Why not? Bars, liquor stores, gas stations. You get your head blown off sticking out one of them. Restaurants on the other end, you catch with their pants down. In this clip, Pumpkin is talking with Honey Bunny. He says that stealing from bars, liquor stores, and gas stations is too dangerous. He says that restaurants, on the other hand, are less dangerous. He means that the option of stealing from restaurants is safer. All that's left now is to kill Elsa and bring back Summer. You're no match for Elsa. No, you're no match for Elsa. I, on the other hand, am the hero who was going to save Arendelle from destruction. 
Fellas, fellas, please. This is very embarrassing for me. I, on, on the other hand, I, I probably could get used to this. Let's move on to the next phrase. Our next idiom is hit the road. This basically is a phrase that we would use when we are in the process of leaving or starting a trip. It can also be used when we are annoyed with someone and we want them to leave. Okay, now let's look at some more movie clips that are good examples of this idiom. We're going to Orlando, Florida. Well, actually, first we're going into Missouri to pick up my grandma. Do you know the McAllisters are going to France? Do you know if it's cold there? Do these vans get good gas mileage? Gee, kid, I don't know. Hit the road. In this clip, a young boy is talking with a van driver. The boy has many annoying questions for the busy man. After listening to the boy ask these questions, the frustrated man tells the boy to hit the road. This means that the man is telling the boy to go away. Idiot! I knew this would happen! I let him right into my place and tell him what's mine is his! Hey, he's gone! He's stupid! He's stolen food and hit the road! What did I expect? In this clip, Linguini becomes friends with a talented rat. The name of the rat is Remy, and it can cook very well. Linguini goes to sleep, but when he awakens, he does not see Remy. He immediately thinks that he has been fooled by Remy. He thinks Remy has stolen his food and hit the road. This means that he thinks Remy took his food and went away. But actually, Remy had awakened early and was cooking breakfast for him. That's what I get for trusting a rat. Listen, I don't know what you're doing skulking around during daylight hours, but I don't want any trouble in here. So hit the road. I'm not looking for any trouble either, sir. In this clip, Nick, the sly fox, is trying to buy some ice cream from the elephant. The elephant doesn't trust the fox and tells him to hit the road. The elephant is telling the fox that he doesn't want to have any problems and that he should go away. I simply want to buy a jumbo pop. Great. Let's move on to the next phrase. Our next phrase is a phrasal verb, although you also might find it in a book of idioms. The phrasal verb is call off. This means to either cancel or stop doing something. For example, Karen, due to COVID, we're going to have to call off your birthday party. And as for you, Todd, all of your basketball games have been called off as well. Okay, now let's see some examples from movies. All the time spent preparing you, schooling you, giving you everything we never had. I ask you, what do you expect us to do? Call off the gathering! In this clip, the princess is talking with her mother about a gathering that has been arranged. The mother wants to find a husband for her. However, she does not want to get married and asks her mother to call off the gathering. This means that the princess is asking her mother to cancel the gathering. Would that kill them? You're the queen. How charming can I be when I have to pretend I'm that dreadful ogre? No! No, it's nobody's fault. Um, perhaps it's best if we just call the whole thing off, okay? What? Does that mean you can't force someone to fall in love? In this clip, Fiona's father is talking with Prince Charming and the fairy godmother. They had been working together to try to trick Fiona into falling in love with Prince Charming. Fiona's father can see that Fiona is not interested in the prince, so he suggests calling off the plan. Fiona's father is saying that they should cancel the plan and stop trying to change how Fiona thinks. Sir, I've got a visual on the bogey. Whiplash to re-engage. If you get a clear shot, you take it. Major, we don't even know what we're shooting at. Call off the raft. That thing just took out an F-22 inside a legal no-fly zone. In this clip, Rhodey is talking with a major about something that just destroyed one of their jets. Rhodey says that they should call off the Raptors, which is a type of fighter plane. 
This means that Rhodey wants the Major to cancel the attack of the Raptor fighter planes. The Major is angry that one of their jets was shot down and he wants the Raptors to attack. Whiplash 2, if you have a clear shot, take it. So we've now finished three phrases. What do you think? Are you enjoying these videos? We have more of these free videos online and we're working hard to add more each week. It takes a lot of time to create this content and we could really use your help. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. By subscribing to our channel, you will be able to receive notifications whenever we upload a new video to YouTube. We really need your help. Okay, so what's the next phrase? The next phrase is the phrasal verb, cut it out. It's something someone would say to another person when they wanted them to stop doing something. Quite often when a person uses this phrasal verb, they are feeling annoyed or angry. Alright, now let's watch some more movie clips using this phrasal verb. Give me your tickets right now. I'm gonna kick your meek little sheep butt. Ow! Cut it out, Gideon! Bad, bad. What are you gonna do, cry? Hey! You heard her. Cut it out. In this clip, Gideon is bullying the other young animals. One of the young animals tells Gideon to cut it out. This means that the young animals want Gideon to stop being a bully. Judy Hopps arrives and also tells Gideon to cut it out, meaning that he should stop acting like a bully. Nice costume, loser! Stop waving that thing around! Ooh, ooh, I'm gonna slip! Yeah. <laughs> it's clean! Got ya! <laughs> Will you cut it out? In this clip, Sid is holding the human baby while talking with Manny and Diego. Sid takes the diaper off the baby and throws it in the air. Manny and Diego think it's a dirty diaper. After Sid tells them that it's clean, Manny says, cut it out, to Sid. He means that he wants Sid to stop the annoying jokes. All right. Come on in. You scare off a lot of trade with that. You can get yourself hurt kicking on doors. Cut it out, Art. The guy's right. You run a garage, don't you? In this clip, Philip Marlowe pretends that his car has a flat tire. He goes to a garage and asks the people to fix his car. The mechanic starts arguing with Marlowe. Another man in the garage tells the mechanic to cut it out, since he does manage a garage. The man is telling the mechanic to stop arguing with Marlowe. Let's move on to the next phrase. The next phrasal verb is hang in there. The meaning of this phrasal verb is to continue doing something in a determined way even though it is difficult. An example of this phrasal verb is, come on Johnny. Hang in there. I know you can do it. All right, now let's take a look at some examples from movies. I am not a dumb bunny. Right. And that's not wet cement. You'll never be a real cop. You're a cute meter maid, though. Maybe a supervisor one day. Hang in there. In this clip, Judy is trying to get Nick to help her solve a police case that she's working on. Nick does not think that Judy is a real cop because she is a young, innocent bunny. He only considers her a meter maid, but he tells her to hang in there. He's telling her to not give up but he's also saying that he still thinks she's never going to be a real cop. No! This is not making much of a difference, is it? Hang in there, guys! In this clip, Anna and Kristoff are running away from a monster snowman. Olaf is not far behind but is thrown off the cliff by the monster. As Olaf is falling, he yells out, hang in there guys. Olaf means that he doesn't want his friends to stop trying to escape. 
He is cheering for them. Go, go faster! Hmm. <laughs> I get it. Who wants to talk to a guy in a tree? <laughs> I, I get it. Hang in there. Don't cry. Don't. Please don't cry. In this clip, Maxwell Smart runs into Agent 13, who has been assigned to watch over things from inside a tree. It's a bad assignment, and Agent 13 looks very sad and lonely. Max tells him to hang in there. He doesn't want to see him cry. Max is telling Agent 13 that he should keep trying to do his job and accept this uncomfortable assignment. Great. Let's move on to the next phrase. This is the idiom, keep in touch. The meaning of this idiom is, to maintain contact with another person. This could be any form of communication. It could be another meeting, or a phone call, or an email, or through social media. Now let's look at some clips from movies that provide examples of this idiom. Well, I guess we should be going now. Promise me, you'll keep in touch. In this clip, Mike and Sully are moving out of the frat house at the university. They've all become good friends and one of the frat members says that he hopes Mike and Sully will keep in touch. The frat member is saying that he hopes that Mike and Sully will continue communicating with him in the future. You're the scariest bunch of monsters I have ever met. I just want you to know, Sean, that you're welcome, Will. So, you know, I uh, hope we keep in touch, you know. In this clip, Will is having his last meeting with his therapist, Sean. Sean has helped Will a lot. Will is emotional and thankful for all the help Sean has provided. He says that he hopes they will keep in touch. Will means that he wants to continue communicating with Sean as friends now that the therapy is completed. Yeah, me too. Don't take it personal. Long pills. Keep in touch. In this clip, Alvi has been arrested and is getting bailed out by his friend. As Alvi is leaving the jail cell, he tells the other prisoners that he wants them to keep in touch. Alvi is telling the other prisoners to continue to communicate with him even though he is leaving. However, he is probably not serious and only saying this to be polite. Let's move on to the next phrase. Phrasal verb is, look forward to. The meaning of this phrasal verb is, it is used to say that you are happy something is going to happen. An example of this phrasal verb is, oh my god. Tomorrow, I'm flying to Hawaii for a two-week holiday. I'm really looking forward to it. Another example is, wow. I can't believe that I have a date with Barry. I'm really looking forward to it. Now let's look at examples from some movie clips. Cray, that's my brother's. Oh, that's right. I look forward to seeing you in class. <laughs> in this clip, Hero has just finished demonstrating his microbots to a large group of people. The owner of Cray Tech Industries offers to buy Hero's technology, but Hero says no. The director of a very good school is happy about this and invites Hero to attend his school. The director says he looks forward to seeing Hero in class. He means that he is happy to have Hero attend his school and wants to see Hero in class.
Sullivan, nice work out there. I look forward to having you back in class. In this clip, Sully's team has just won the scare contest. But he is not happy because he knows that he cheated. People are congratulating him. One of the teachers congratulates him and says he looks forward to seeing him in class. The teacher means that he is proud that Sully's team won and wants to see him in class. <laughs> hey, there he is! Perhaps if you told him I ran the second largest banking house in Amsterdam. The second largest? That wouldn't impress Rick. The leading banker in Amsterdam is now the pastry chef in our kitchen. We have something to look forward to. In this clip, a group of customers invite the owner of a restaurant, Rick, to have a drink with them. The waiter says that Rick never drinks with customers. One of the customers says the waiter should tell Rick that he is an important banker. The waiter says that the cook in their kitchen was also an important banker and that this would not impress Rick. The customer sarcastically says that they can look forward to the food that the cook makes. This means that the people can be excited about eating the food that the cook prepares for them. And his father is the bellboy. <laughs> Let's move on to the next phrase. Passed away. This phrasal verb has only one possible meaning. It is referring to the death of someone. So why do we use this phrasal verb? Well, this phrasal verb is considered a more polite and gentle way of referring to death. All right, let's look at some examples of this phrasal verb from a few movies. Oh, we've been waiting Excuse me, sir. Are you the one who brought the old man in? Mm-hmm. How is he? Well, he just passed away. In this clip, Phil brings an old man into the hospital to have him checked. After attempting to treat the man, the nurse goes to Phil and says that the man has passed away. The nurse is explaining to Phil that the old man has died. She uses the phrase, passed away, as a sensitive way of communicating the sad news. What did he die of? He was just old. It was just his time. He's not quite the bastard everybody says he is. No, I have the franchise on that. Does that make him proud? I doubt it. It doesn't really matter now. He passed away. In this clip, Edward is talking with James Morse and his son. After James refers to Edward's father, Edward tells James that his father has passed away. Edward is obviously talking about his father's death and James apologizes for bringing up the subject of his father. I hadn't heard, I'm sorry. I'm sorry too. I have some bad news, Thomas. No. Your great uncle passed away, I just received word. In this clip, Thomas's employer tells him that his great uncle has passed away. She apologizes for his loss, the death of his great uncle, and hopes that he will be okay. Thomas says that he didn't even know he had a great uncle and is more interested in getting a job promotion. I'm very sorry. <sighs> I didn't even know I had a great uncle. What about the promotion? Let's move on to the next phrase. This next phrasal verb is knock it off. This phrasal verb is basically used when we want someone to stop doing or saying something. When people use this phrasal verb, they are often annoyed or frustrated. Okay, once again, let's look at some examples of this phrasal verb from a few movies. Okay, now let's take a look at some examples from some movies. I saw your big finish on the news. Nice smooch, <laughs> lover boy. Oh, Ixnay on the SK, man. That's private. That's private. Private? The entire reef saw you do it. Hey, whoa. Somebody's in a bad mood. Come on, Ange. Let me see the smile. Show me the smile, baby. Knock it off. In this clip, Angie is expressing her anger with Oscar about him kissing another woman. Oscar is trying to calm her and asks her to smile. Angie doesn't like this and says, knock it off. When she says this phrase, she is telling him to stop trying to ignore the fact that she is very angry. What has gotten into you? 
I'm going to slice its hind quarters into sections. I'm going to put the white meat in one pile and the dark in another. Hey, knock it off. I'm starving. Next, the shoulders. Occasionally tough, but extremely juicy. I told you to knock it off. In this clip, one of the saber-toothed tigers is talking about separating the meat he is hoping to get after killing a mammoth. The larger tiger tells him to knock it off because it only makes him feel more hungry. The larger tiger says this phrase because he wants the smaller tiger to stop talking about food. They start to argue and the boss of the tigers also says, knock it off. The boss of the tigers is telling the other two tigers not to argue because by doing this, it will make them tired. Save your energy! Mammoths don't go down easy. Come on! Come on! I know you. You're that Earth First bastard, huh? Earth First, what's that? Professional saboteur. Fireman! Criminals! Knock it off! In this clip, Roland realizes that Nick and Sarah are environmentalists. Roland is a miner who only wants to find minerals to make money. The two groups begin to argue until Sarah jumps in and says, knock it off. She's telling them to stop arguing because they have to solve the problems that they have with the dinosaurs. Listen to me! Okay, great. Let's take a look at our next idiom. The next idiom is, get back to. This is actually a phrasal verb, but you'll often find this phrase in a book of idioms as well. This phrasal verb basically means to return to doing something or possibly return to conversing with someone. An example would be, I don't know the answer to your question. Let me check on it and I'll get back to you. Another example would be, we finished our coffee break, let's get back to work. Okay, once again, let's look at some examples of this phrasal verb from a few movies. So... Do you want to go somewhere fun? Uh, Do you want to go somewhere really, really fun? Uh, oh. Unless you want... I mean, did you want to get back to Big Z? I'm no, sorry. No, no, I no, no, no. In this clip, Lonnie is asking Cody if he would like to do something that's fun. Cody hesitates a little and Lonnie quickly says, you may want to get back to Big Z. Lonnie is really asking if Cody needs to return to his discussion with Big Z. Get back to means to return to doing something or conversing with someone. Hi, I don't know. Things are a little weird with Leonard right now. You want me to remove him from the team? I'm the captain. I can do that. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. Just let me talk to him and I'll get back to you. When are you going to talk to him? <laughs> In this clip, Penny is explaining to Sheldon that she is currently having a problem with Leonard. Sheldon offers to help, but Penny says no, let me talk to him and I'll get back to you. Penny is saying that before they do anything, she wants to talk to Leonard. After she talks with Leonard, she will return to Sheldon and explain what is happening. It's gone? My compass, my supplies, my pixie dust. I left you in charge. Why didn't you warn me? Well, I... You... Okay, okay, we'll get back to that later. We gotta find that balloon. In this clip, Tinker Bell is talking with Blaze about her lost balloon. After arguing with Blaze a little, Tinker Bell says, We'll get back to that later. Tinker Bell is saying that first they need to find the balloon and later they can once again discuss what happened. It blew books off shelves from 20 feet away and scared the socks off some poor librarian. I'm very excited. I'm very pleased. I want you to get right down there, check it out, and get back to me. No, okay? no, get right back no, to me. Peter, you're coming with us on this one. In this clip, Raymond is excited because there's a ghost that they must catch. Peter doesn't really care at the moment, so he asks Ray to check it out and get back to him. He's telling Ray to go investigate the situation and come back and tell him what he sees. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, get this straight. 
We use this phrase when we want to restate facts so as to ensure that we clearly understand what is being said. So here's an example of this idiom, so let me get this straight. You want me to go shopping and buy all of the items on this list and when I return, you will repay me. Right? This idiom summarizes a discussion that had previously occurred. Okay, now let's take a look at some examples from some movies. Help, you will never find your precious satchel. Mm -mm. Let me just get this straight. I take you to see the lanterns. In this clip, Rapunzel is telling Flynn that she has hidden his satchel and she will return it after he helps her. She wants him to take her to the place where the lanterns are released into the sky. Flynn wants to be clear about what Rapunzel wants, so he says, let me get this straight. He then summarizes what she has just said so that there is a clear understanding of what her proposal is. Bring you back home, and you'll give me back my satchel? I promise. They've appointed George here as executive secretary to take his father's place. Oh, no, but Uncle Billy is... You can is... keep him on, that's all right. As secretary, you can hire anyone you like. Well, Dr. Kamala, let's get this thing straight. I'm leaving. I'm leaving right now. In this clip, the owners of the building and loan company have agreed to keep the company open if George agrees to manage it. George doesn't want to work there. He wants to go back to school and pursue his dreams. He tells the people, get this thing straight, he's going back to school. George says this because he wants the people to clearly understand his intentions. He does not want this job going to school. This is my last chance. Uncle Billy here. He's your man. And the godless witch was miserably burnt to death. <sighs> Let me get this straight. The story is about cannibalism. In this clip, Tim and the boss baby are reading a book so that Tim's parents will think that they're becoming close friends. The boss baby becomes interested in the children's book and says, let me get this straight. He wants to be clear that what he is reading is really true, that the book is about burning people alive. And burning people alive. Yeah. Let's move on to the next phrase. This phrase is called, keep it down. The meaning of this phrase is, please don't talk so loudly. Speak quietly. An example of this phrase can often be heard in a library where someone might say, you're being too loud. Please keep it down. Other people are studying. Okay, now let's look at some examples from some movies. You know you want a great cat burglars in the world, Mark? You think you could keep it down a little in there, huh? In this clip, Harry and Marv are stealing things from a house. Marv likes to break things when he goes into a house, and this makes a lot of noise. Harry tells him to keep it down. He says this because he wants Marv to be quiet so that the police won't catch them. I'm from the open ocean exhibit, and that's where my parents are. We gotta go. Can you take me there? Uh, kind of tough for a whale to travel around here. Can you please keep it down over there? My head oh. hurts. In this clip, Dory is talking with an old friend, Destiny. As they're talking, another sea animal in the next enclosure asks them to keep it down. He's asking them to talk quietly because he has a headache. Who's that? That's my neighbor Bailey. Uh -huh. He was brought in with a head injury. Are you done? Yes. It will take me a moment to reinflate. Fine, just keep it down. In this clip, Hero is talking with Baymax. They're sneaking into a building, and Hero doesn't want other people to find him. Baymax lets air out of his body so that he can get in the building. After entering, he tells Hero he will reinflate. Hero says, fine, just keep it down. Hero is telling Baymax to do it quietly. Oh. 
Okay, you're doing great. Let's move on to the next phrase. This phrase is, waste of time. This can be said many ways, waste your time. Waste my time. Wasting my time. Any pronoun form can be used in this idiom. The meaning of this idiom is, it's a bad use of time. A useless activity. An example would be, lying on a sofa for hours and hours watching mindless TV programs is a waste of time. Okay, let's look at some examples of this idiom from various movies. You weren't uh, in broadcasting or journalism? Mm -mm. Believe it or not, I studied 19th century French poetry. <laughs> what a waste of time. In this clip, Rita is talking to Phil about what she studied while she was at university. Rita tells Phil that she studied 19th century French poetry. Without thinking, Phil says that this was a waste of time. He means that this was a useless thing to study while at school. I mean, for someone else, that would be an incredible waste of time. I don't mind if you don't like my manners. I don't like them myself. They're pretty bad. I grieve over them long winter evenings, and I don't mind you ritzing me or drinking your lunch out of a bottle. But don't waste your time trying to cross-examine me. In this clip, Philip is annoyed with the way Vivian is treating him. He tells Vivian to not waste her time asking the kinds of questions that she had been asking. He's telling her that she is foolish asking him such questions and that she should stop this. People don't talk to me like that. Rehabilitated. It's just a word. So you go on and stamp your form, Sonny, and stop wasting my time. In this clip, Red is talking with the parole board about releasing him from prison. The parole board has rejected his parole many times, and he feels like, at this point, they are wasting his time. He means that he doesn't think they really care about him and that if they're not going to be serious, they shouldn't talk to him because both they and he could be doing other more useful things. Because I tell you the truth, Let's move on to the next phrase. And that phrase is, stick around. The meaning of this phrasal verb is, to not leave. To stay in one location. To wait for someone. An example of this phrasal verb would be, please stick around for a while. I want to talk to you about something. All right, now let's take a look at some examples from some movies. What would you think about maybe asking us to stick around? What? You don't have to mean it or anything. Just ask us to stick around, I promise you. In this clip, Butch is talking to a gambler about a problem he is having with his friend, Sundance. Butch suggests to the gambler that he ask them to stick around. If he does this, Sundance will not get angry. Butch is asking the gambler to request that Butch and Sundance not leave the saloon. I don't blame you. Well, you're welcome to come with, but I don't know how exciting you're going to find the laundromat. Hmm. I got to run some errands. Oh. But think about what you want, and I will stick around just for you. In this clip, Lily is just about to go home for the day, but she tells Baby that she will stick around just to take care of him. She is telling him that although she is about to go home, she will stay and take care of him because she likes him. She thinks he is special. Coffee? Please. Fine, sounds great. You? Uh, yeah. Could you do me a favor? Just stick around here. It's better. In this clip, Roy is talking to June about going to dinner together. After agreeing to having dinner at 9 p.m., Roy asked June to stick around the hotel until 9 p.m. He wants her to be safe. Roy is asking June to not leave the hotel because he's worried about her safety. Oh yeah, of course. Let's move on to the next phrase. 
get this over with. The meaning is the phrasal verb is to do, finish or accomplish something that is unpleasant or undesirable and to do it as quickly as possible. An example would be, my father told me that I can't have a new smartphone until I get an A in math. So I thought, let's get this over with. I want that phone. Now let's take a look at some movie clips with examples of this phrasal verb. What are these? Puppets. You use them when you tell the story. Okay, let's get this over with. Three little kittens love to play. In this clip, the children ask Gru to read them a bedtime story. Gru doesn't really want to do this, but he feels that it is necessary. He says, let's get this over with. Gru says this because he just wants to finish this chore so he can move on to doing something else more interesting. Let's get this over with, Ryder. In this clip, Flynn Ryder has been captured by the King's men. While waiting in jail, a guard comes and says, Let's get this over with, to Ryder. The guard is saying that he just wants to finish doing this unpleasant task. Flynn touches his neck because he thinks something bad will happen to him. Maybe he will be hung by his neck. Where are we going? Okay, take a deep breath and insert the needle into the node. Come on, Kate. Let's get this over with. In this clip, Dr. House and Wilson are talking with Kate via a video call. House and Wilson want to do an unpleasant test on Kate that involves her putting a needle into a node in her body. The two men know this will be uncomfortable, but it must be done. So House says, let's get this over with. He is saying that although this is an unpleasant task, it must be done. Therefore, let's do it. You used her name. Well, you're doing great. Our next phrase is the phrasal verb, keep an eye on. It basically means to watch something or someone closely or carefully. For example, I might ask my teenage daughter to keep an eye on her little brother. Understand? Okay, it's always helpful to see these idioms used in actual movies, so let's look at some examples. How much money do you have? Eighty dollars. I have 42 that will probably cover taxi cabs. But how would I get there? Really? I have to run these tickets over to someone. Can you keep an eye on things up front till I get back? In this clip, Jessica is explaining to Jonah how he might be able to travel to New York. Jessica's mother comes in and asks her to keep an eye on things out front because she has to go outside. Jessica's mother is asking for her to make sure that there are no problems in the front of the house while she is out. Sure, Mom. I need you to watch the prisoner tonight. Well, daggone. Wait a minute. What if he tries to run again? Just let him run out of gas and tow him on back. But keep an eye on him. In this clip, the sheriff is talking with Mater. The sheriff asks Mater to keep an eye on Lightning McQueen while he is gone. The sheriff is asking Mater to watch McQueen carefully because he is a prisoner and he may try to escape. Yes, sir! Why you? What does she want? A job. For the boy. Only a job? Well, yes. Then what are you worried about? If he works here, you'll be able to keep an eye on him while I do a little digging. Find out how much of this is real. In this clip, Chef Skinner is talking with his lawyer about the boy, Linguini. The chef thinks that the boy is trying to trick him and possibly steal the restaurant. The lawyer tells him not to worry and that since he is working there, he can keep an eye on him. 
The lawyer means that the chef can watch and observe the boy while the lawyer finds out more about the boy's background. Are you enjoying these videos? We have more of these free videos online and we're working hard to add more each week. It takes a lot of time to create this content and we could really use your help. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. By subscribing to our channel, you will be able to receive notifications whenever we upload a new video to YouTube. We really need your help. Let's move on to the next phrase. This phrase is the phrasal verb, let you down. The meaning of this phrasal verb is to disappoint someone by not doing something you said you will do or that they expected you to do. An example would be, hey dad, I know that you paid a lot of money for me to go to a university and then I failed all my classes. I'm sorry that I let you down. Okay, now let's once again watch some examples of this phrasal verb from some movie clips. And I know you have a lot of friends. I don't. You're my only friend, Calvin. And I will never let you down again, I promise. In this clip, Bob is talking with his boyhood friend, Calvin. Bob feels like he had previously disappointed Calvin and says, I will never let you down again. Bob means that he will never betray Calvin's trust and make him disappointed again. Make sure she doesn't leave until I get back. Should we break both ankles or just one? I'm sorry. That was weird. Both. What? Just stall her. I won't let you down. In this clip, Peter Rabbit is talking with his friends. He is telling them that he is going to solve their problem and that he won't let them down. He's saying that they can trust him and that they won't be disappointed if they do what he asks. I promise. Oh, Harry's cup run is over! Uh, George, about that job, Bruce spoke out of turn. I never said I'd take it. You've been holding the bag here for four years, and... Well, I won't let you down, George. In this clip, Harry has just gotten married. He is talking with his brother, George. George has been doing all the work in the family business while Harry was at school. Harry knows that George wants to go to school too and says, I won't let you down. Harry is saying that George can trust him. He will now start working and he won't disappoint George. I would like to. T well, wait, wait a minute, I forgot the bags. I'll be right Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. By subscribing to our channel, you will be able to receive notifications whenever we upload a new video to YouTube. We really need your help. Let's move on to the next phrase. This phrase is an idiom and it's called, on the same page. This idiom means, to have the same kind of understanding about a situation. An example would be, okay, so you said that you'll handle sales and marketing and I'll be responsible for accounting and inventory control. Yes, I think we're on the same page now. Great, now let's take a look at some clips from various movies. Let me pass that along. This is his garden. There we are. I think we're all on the same page, so these rabbits will now surrender their natural instinct to feed themselves. In this clip, B is talking with old Mr. McGregor about the rabbits. McGregor is angry at the rabbits because they keep eating his vegetables. B pretends to talk with the rabbits and explains that they should not eat Mr. McGregor's vegetables. After talking with the rabbits, B says that the rabbits are now on the same page. She means that the rabbits now understand all the rules and that they can't eat the vegetables. But she is joking. When I make this delivery, I'm gonna have me over a million. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So we on the same page then. In this clip, Wardell is a gun runner who is talking with Lewis about his plan to make money. After explaining the way he works, he asks Lewis if we're on the same page. 
He's asking Lewis if he understands what he's saying and whether he will continue to work with him. Yeah, follow. Him. I gotta say, you really got us pegged. We're just a deep well of anger and self-loathing. Denial. Sure, that too. Narcissism. Yeah, yeah. Emotional emptiness. So we're on the same page. In this clip, Wolf is talking to Diane about his gang of thieves. Diane is explaining all of their negative qualities. Wolf says he agrees with her opinions and that they are on the same page. He means that he thinks she's right and he agrees with her statements. What is he doing? Excellent. Let's move on to the next phrase. This phrase is an idiom called out of business. This idiom simply means to discontinue the business or the plan. An example would be, if my employees don't start acting more responsibly, they're going to put me out of business. All right, now let's look at some movie clips of this idiom. Hello, what do you have at your store? I have gas. <laughs> Okay, boys, stay with me. Uh, and Flo, what'll happen if no one can come to your station to buy gas? I'll go out of business and we'll have to leave town. In this clip, Sally is talking with Flo about working in Radiator Springs. Flo sells gasoline and Sally asks her what will happen if nobody buys her gas. Flo tells Sally that if nobody buys her gas, she will go out of business. Flo is saying that she will have to close her shop and move away from their town. 50 grand, I gotta chase you down for 1,200. Forget about it. No, 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 Jack, please, Jack, just... Jack, nothing, forget about it. What else you got? God, I ain't got nothing. This is it. If you don't find this guy, I'm out of business. In this clip, Eddie is a bondsman that needs to find a criminal. He tells Jack that if he cannot find this man, he is out of business. Eddie is telling Jack that if he cannot find this man, he will have to close his shop and discontinue working. Eddie, I'll do it for 100000 Ask us no. If you ask the state alienist, the answer is yes. Who is he? What's he do? He's a bookkeeper. He starts at $20 a week, and after 14 years, he gradually works himself up to seventeen fifty. Come on, come. No, McCluskey Company goes out of business, and Williams loses his job. In this clip, Hildy is a reporter that is asking about the life of Earl Williams, who has been convicted of murder. The other reporters tell her that he was a bookkeeper until the company he worked for went out of business. The reporters are telling Hildy that Earl has had a difficult life and that recently the company he worked for closed down and he lost his job. That's interesting. Whereas I am a horrible person, therefore I have no choice but to be horrible. That's what you're saying. But that's all right. That's all right. I put you out of business, so... In this clip, Joe Fox is explaining to Kathleen how she just insulted him without knowing she did it. Kathleen realizes that Joe is right. Joe says that he understands why she might be angry because he put her out of business. Joe is admitting that the actions of his company forced Kathleen's company to close down. You're entitled to hate me. Great work. You're doing fantastic. Let's move on to the next phrase. This phrase is the phrasal verb, run out of. The meaning of this phrasal verb is to finish using the supply of something. An example of this phrasal verb is, we have to stop our class now. We've run out of time. Okay, now let's look at some movie clips that use this phrasal verb. Hey, what? Your name's Baby. B-A-B-Y, -B Baby. Yeah? Oh, well, then you have us all beat. <laughs> Every damn song is about you. <laughs> we could drive back and forth across the stage forever and never run out of baby songs. We might run out of gas. <laughs> In this clip, Baby is talking with Deborah about driving across the country with her. Deborah tells Baby that there would be plenty of songs on the radio with the word baby in it. She says that they will never run out of baby songs to listen to. He says yes, but they might run out of gas. 
He means that although they might have plenty of baby songs to listen to, they might not have enough gas. Yeah, in fact, it's a very simple program. Isn't that, isn't that right? So what happens when you run out of choices? In this clip, Susan and Josh are talking to the managers about a new toy that they've developed. One of the managers asks what the user will do when they run out of choices while playing the game. Susan explains that when the user is finished with their existing choices, their company can sell new discs that give the user more adventures to enjoy. Well, well that's the great thing. I mean, you can just sell different adventures. Just pop in a brand new disc. And... Do you know what happened to me while you were off flying around? I was almost in an earthquake. I had this gas station blow up beside my car. There's telephone poles falling all over the road. I'm almost killed and I just taught the whole thing off this stupid car runs out of gas. In this clip, Lois, a reporter, is explaining to Superman what a horrible day she has had. The last thing she says is that her car ran out of gas. Lois is saying that so many exciting things were happening and then there was no more gas in her car so she couldn't seek out good news stories like she wanted to. Sorry about that, Lois. That was spectacular. Great work. Let's move on to the next phrase. This phrase is an idiom called, take it easy. The meaning of this idiom is, to relax. Don't worry. We use this idiom a lot. An example of this idiom is, you're so worried about everything. Take it easy. Everything is going to be okay. Okay, it's once again time to look at some movie clips of this idiom. Oh, then you must know what happens when I flex my pinky. <gasps> no, no, no. You know the hardest part of this? The hardest part is cleaning up afterwards. <laughs> okay. Okay, take it easy. In this clip, Master Shurfu is showing Poe a kung fu move. Poe recognizes the move immediately and knows that he could be hurt badly. He says to Shurfu, take it easy. Poe is asking Master Shurfu to not hurt him, but rather, relax and talk calmly with him. Now listen closely, Panda, Ugwe. Of course, but he knows the other guy's voice. Papa, is everything all right in there? Joe, answer him. Um, we can take it easy, I'll be out in a minute. In this clip, Joe is talking to Mr. Jordan about changing into the body of another man named Mr. Farnsworth. The butler is calling Mr. Farnsworth's name, but Joe thinks that if he speaks, the butler will not recognize his voice. Mr. Jordan tells Joe to answer the butler. So Joe tells the frantic butler to take it easy. Joe is telling the butler that he is okay and that he doesn't need to worry. He's also telling the butler to relax. Very good, sir. Let's go. Wallace. Joey. Come on, fast. That's fine. Fast. Take it easy. Take it easy. In this clip, Batman's father, Thomas Wayne, is being robbed by a thief. Thief demands his wallet and his wife's jewelry. Mr. Wayne tells the thief to take it easy. Mr. Wayne is telling the thief to relax and not get too excited. He knows the thief has a gun and he can see that the thief is nervous. He is worried the thief might shoot his gun. Here you go. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this idiom is bottom line. This means the most important factor that needs to be considered. An example of this would be bottom line, I would to devise a secure financial plan for my family. All right, now let's take a look at some examples of this idiom from movie clips. I analyzed your blood, isolating the receptor compounds and the protein-based catalyst. I may not understand any of that. Not at all. I just wanted you to know how hard it was. 
Bottom line, I synthesized an antidote. In this clip, Alfred is explaining to Bruce Wayne how he analyzed his blood. He tells Bruce how difficult it was to do. He then says, bottom line, I was able to develop an antidote. He is saying that if you ignore all of the technical words, the important message is that they solved the problem. Could you make more? Take it, take it. Just right over you here. Can have it. Okay, that Listen to me, listen, stop, stop. I need to know what is happening right now. Okay, okay, you know what, moving too fast. Bottom line, are you in or are you out? In this clip, Bob, a government agent, has dragged his childhood friend, Calvin, into a dangerous investigation. Calvin doesn't understand anything and asks Bob what is happening. Bob replies, bottom line, are you in or are you out? Bob doesn't have time to explain, but he's asking the important question, does Calvin want to be involved or not? What are you talking, in or out or what? Mm -hmm. You three sound like you've been gargling nails. Well? I could give you a lot of fancy terms, but bottom line, they're exhausting. In this clip, the doctor is examining the chipmunks because none of them are feeling well. Ian, the manager, asks her how they are doing. The doctor says, bottom line, they're exhausted. She is saying that she will not give him a technical explanation, but just say what is important. All of the chipmunks are very tired. Great. Let's move on to the next phrase. This is the idiom, behind your back. The meaning of this idiom is, to do something to someone without their knowing in a way that is unfair. An example would be, hey Paula. Andrea is saying bad things about you behind your back. Okay, now let's take a look at some movie clips that provide examples of this idiom. There's another thing I'm not going to tell you. Okay, I will tell you. Look, behind your back, Dave calls you, uh, the rats. In this clip, Ian, the manager, is talking with the chipmunks. He tells the chipmunks that Dave, their good friend, calls them rats behind their backs. Ian is saying that when the chipmunks are not around, Dave is insulting them. However, Ian is lying. This makes the chipmunks very sad. They feel betrayed. Apparently, Denver wanted to deal with him instead of you. Said who? Sugar? <laughs> I'm learning as I go here. So you empowered Bob Sugar to deal with Denver behind my back? In this clip, Jerry Maguire, a sports agent, is talking with the father of a star football player, Matt. Jerry realizes that the father has already signed a contract with another agent behind his back. This means that although Matt had previously told Jerry that he would work with him, he signed an agreement with a different agent. Jerry is very angry because he feels betrayed. Do you trust your wife? Oh, that's funny. What I mean is, do you think she'd go behind your back, try to hamstring you? That's it. Step aside, Mert. This guy's having himself an accident. You don't push him off the roof. In this clip, Andy is trying to help Captain Hadley with a tax problem. Andy asks the captain if he thinks his wife would ever go behind his back. Andy is asking Captain Hadley if he thinks that his wife could ever betray him, because if he trusts her, he has an idea how to solve his tax problem. Fantastic. Let's move on to the next phrase. This is the idiom, out of hand. The meaning of this idiom is, to become difficult to control. An example of this idiom is, our son's behavior is getting out of hand. All right, now let's take a look at some movie clips that provide examples of this idiom. You okay, Anna? I got you. 
Elsa, what have you done? This is getting out of hand. In this clip, Anna has fallen and gotten hurt. While Elsa is comforting Anna, their parents arrive and say that Elsa is getting out of hand. Her parents are saying that her magical powers are getting difficult to manage and have now injured her sister. It was an accident. The minute you do, they lose all respect for you. Mm. Well, it's not like that. We just email. It's really nothing. On top of which, I am definitely thinking about stopping because it's getting out of hand. Uh In this clip, Kathleen is talking to her assistant about dating on the internet. Her assistant asks if it's getting out of hand. The assistant is asking if Kathleen is finding it difficult to manage an online relationship. Kathleen says that she's finding the relationship confusing. Confusing. Forget the myths that the media has created about the White House. The truth is, these are not very bright guys, and things got out of hand. Hunts come in from the cold. In this clip, Bob Woodward is talking with a political informant about the Watergate Hotel break-in. The informant says that the criminals that broke in are not intelligent people and things just got out of hand. The informant is saying the criminals are not smart and made many foolish mistakes. He is telling Woodward not to overthink what is happening. He is telling him to simplify his investigation. Great work. Let's move on to the next phrase. This is the phrasal verb, put up with. The meaning of this phrasal verb is, to accept or continue to accept an unpleasant situation. An example of this phrasal verb is, it's difficult for me to put up with all of the drama in this relationship. It's exhausting. Okay, let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrasal verb. Yeah, you and the rat. I could use a little hose down, help me wash this off. Where's he going? Oh, he's just a little bit shy and he hates you for killing his flowers. I shouldn't have to put up with this. I'm a precision instrument of speed and aerodynamics. In this clip, Lightning McQueen asks a water truck to wash the mud off him. The truck doesn't speak and drives away. Mater tells Lightning that the truck is angry at him. Lightning says that he shouldn't have to put up with this aggravation. Lightning is saying that he is a superior car and he shouldn't have to listen to other cars complaining. Me, I'm cutting loose. You got royal inspection coming up. Inspection? Meaning you're gonna stand around like an idiot while a bunch of blue blood smirk at you. I don't know how you put up with it, Weaver. In this clip, Z is sitting at a bar with his good friend, Weaver. Weaver says they have a royal inspection coming up. Z is disgusted and says he doesn't understand how Weaver can put up with a bunch of high-class people staring at him. Z is saying that he doesn't understand how Weaver can tolerate people acting superior to him. Z, I've known you for a long time, right? Who? Yeah. I got an ex-wife and I got a daughter in Chicago. How do they put up with all your sarcasm? In this clip, the good-natured criminal, Jonathan, is talking with a private detective, Jack Walsh. Jack can be grumpy at times, and Jonathan asks how his wife and child can put up with him. Jonathan is asking how his wife and child can tolerate his grumpy behavior. Jack says that it's easy, since he rarely sees them. Beautifully. I haven't seen either of them in nine years. That's terrific. Let's move on to the next phrase. This is the idiom, give me a break. The meaning of this idiom is, this is used to tell someone to stop bothering you or treating you unfairly. An example of this idiom is, ah, give me a break teen. I could get hurt doing this routine. Please be careful. All right, now let's look at some movie clips that show examples of this idiom. Bro! 
Lucy! Yes, I be, I How are you, baby? Huh? Yes, no, I couldn't. No, there's a lot of boys here. We're playing. What are you raising? Boys, fellas, give me a break, will you? My five-year-old kid is calling from California. Must be costing him a fortune. In this clip, Oscar gets a phone call from his five-year-old daughter in California. He's having a card game in his apartment and it's very loud, so he tells his friends, give me a break. When he says this, he is telling his friends to be reasonable and considerate because he's talking with his daughter. And the swoop, yes? Bend the knees and the swoop. Got it. Swoop, swoop, bend. Hey! <laughs> Give me a break! I'm new at swooping! In this clip, Stacy is grooming her horse. The instructor tells her how to do it properly. Stacy tries, but the horse hits her with his tail. Stacy says, Give me a break, I'm new at swooping. Stacy is telling the horse to be patient and considerate with her since she's not familiar with grooming. You know, I am so romantic, sometimes I think I should just marry myself. Give me a break, Mike. What a night of romance I got ahead of me. Tonight is about me and Celia. In this clip, Mike is talking to Sully about a big date he has with Celia. Mike says he is so romantic, maybe he should just marry himself. Sully sighs and says, give me a break. Sully is being sarcastic and saying that Mike should stop making foolish comments about himself. Sully doesn't want to listen to Mike bragging about himself. Let's move on to the next phrase. This is the idiom, change your mind. The meaning of this idiom is, to form an opinion or make a decision about something that is not the same as the one you first had. An example of this idiom is, I've changed my mind about my will. I want to leave more money to my grandchildren after I die. Alright, now let's take a look at some movie clips that show examples of this idiom. I'm going to this after-hours thing at my friend's apartment if you want to join. Oh, thanks, Allison, but I got, I got an early day tomorrow. Oh, okay. Well, if you change your mind, here's the address. In this clip, the barmaid, Allison, invites John to a party that is occurring later that evening. John declines the invitation because he has to get up early the next day. Allison says, if you change your mind, here is the address. Allison is saying that if, at a later time, Ted decides he would like to go, this is where the party is occurring. Ah, Hilly, I ah. don't think you ever loved me at all. Oh, never mind that. You're not working for the advertising well, department. If you change your mind, I'm leaving on the 9 o'clock train. Hold on, Hold on. Hold on. I am, instead of trying to change me to something else. In this clip, Bruce is leaving the city on a train, and he wants Hildy to go with him. Hildy says that she can't talk about it now, because she is very busy. Bruce says that if she changes her mind, he will be on the 6 o'clock train. Bruce is telling Hildy that if, at a later time, Hildy decides she does want to go with him, he will be on the six o'clock train. How do you feel? What is that? Different. Mm -hmm. Tart. And then, um, give me. Have you changed your mind at all about the marriage and all that? In this clip, Merida gives her mom some food with a potion in it that she hopes will change her mother's opinions. She's hoping that her mother will stop trying to find her husband. After eating the food, Merida asks her mother if she has changed her mind about the marriage issue. Merida is asking her mother if she has changed her opinion about trying to find her husband. Let's move on to the next phrase. This is the phrasal verb, freaking out. The meaning of this phrase is, to suddenly feel extremely surprised, upset, angry, or confused. An example of this phrasal verb is, why is he freaking out just because his computer is running really slow? Okay, now let's take a look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrasal verb. 
At least that's what the dog needs to think. But just imagine, close your eyes and imagine how excited he'll be when he saves you tomorrow. <laughs> okay? But he's gonna be freaking out all night. Please, just what, what? let me. In this clip, Penny is worried about her dog, Bolt. He's locked away in a cage and he's worried about Penny. She wants to let him out, but the agent says that it's better if he stays locked up. Penny says that Bolt will be freaking out all night. Penny is saying that Bolt will be extremely upset during the night if he is kept locked up. Wait a second. It's Jerry Maguire! Fuck. Jerry? Oh my god, Jerry, I am freaking out. Marcy? He's unconscious. In this clip, Jerry Maguire is talking with Marcy on the phone. Marcy says that she is freaking out because her husband has been hurt playing football. Marcy is saying that she is extremely upset and fearful that her husband might be hurt very badly. Oh, I know, I know, just stay calm. Just Ronan! Did you hear about the Queen? This is terrible! I know, but... We gotta do something! We gotta keep everyone from freaking out! Yes, that's why... In this clip, Nim Galu is talking with Ronan about the death of the Queen. Nim Galu wants to stop everyone from freaking out about the death of the Queen. Nim Galu wants to stop people from becoming very afraid and upset because of the death of the Queen. Let's move on to the next phrase. Let's take a look at our phrase is the idiom, give me a hand. The meaning of this idiom is to help, to aid, or to assist. An example would be, hey mom, standing in this water is not easy. Can you give me a hand? All right, now let's take a look at some movie clips that provide examples of this idiom. Don't! Give me a hand over here. Who am I, Smith or Joe? In this clip, Butch and Sundance are in South America working as guards. Their boss comes out of the bank and says to Jones, give me a hand. The boss is asking Jones to help him put the bags on the horse. Liv. What the hell is that? I think that's the weak element, sir. Give me, give me a hand. See, you? In this clip, a large portion of an ant colony is stuck underground with flood water threatening them. Z has a plan to get above ground. When he succeeds, he asks the soldiers to give me a hand. Z is asking the soldier ants to help him get out of the hole and save all of the ants below ground. There's no way that could get way down in there like that. Unless somebody shoved it in there. She'll be easier to print when we turn her over. Lamar, will you give me a hand with this? Yes, sir, I will. In this clip, Clarice, a detective, is talking with a doctor about how a large larvae got into the mouth of a dead woman. The doctor thinks it was put in the woman's mouth. He then says to his assistant, give me a hand so he can turn the woman over. He is asking the assistant to help him do this. Great. Let's move on to the next phrase. This is the phrasal verb, counting on you. The meaning of this phrasal verb is to depend on someone to do what you want or expect them to do. An example of this phrasal verb is, hey guys, I sure hope the rope attached to that basket is strong enough to carry me. I'm counting on you. Great. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrasal verb. That team will put about a commission like that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I can't even snap my fingers anymore. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> he's not there, Max. 
Now look, don't get crazy on me. I'm counting on you. In this clip, Max thinks that he's talking with an angel that Joe had previously introduced him to. However, Max doesn't know that the angel has already gone away. Joe comes in and sees him talking with nobody. Joe tells him to not become a crazy man because he's counting on him. Joe is saying that he's relying on Max to help him achieve his goal of being a quarterback playing football. And we hope you'll sign a contract to appear five times a year. Perhaps uh, convince some of your friends in the movies to do the same. We're counting on you. In this clip, Michael, a mafia boss, is talking with Johnny, a famous singer. Michael asks Johnny to sing at his hotel frequently to help bring in customers. He says that, we're counting on you. Michael means that he's relying on Johnny to sign a contract to sing at the hotel so as to help improve the business. Yeah, I'd like you to make sure that he's there when I get there. And look, this is second chance for him. They don't get... That's correct. All right, so I'm counting on you to help me help your son. Thank you very much. Put him back on the line, please. In this clip, Wardell is waiting to talk with Max, a bail bondsman. Max is talking with the mother of a criminal that Max is working with. He tells her that he's counting on her to help him help her son. He's saying that he's relying on her help so that he can help her son. Fantastic. Let's move on to the next phrase. This is the phrase, toying with. The meaning of this phrasal verb is, to consider, to think about briefly and not very seriously, or to deceive or manipulate someone. An example of this phrasal verb is, Mary is just toying with Tom. She actually already has a boyfriend. Now let's take a look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrasal verb. Is Gusto's son. This can't just happen! The whole thing is a setup! The boy knows! Look at him out there, pretending to be an idiot. He's toying with my mind like a cat with a ball of something. String? In this clip, Chef Skinner is talking to his lawyer about a boy named Linguini. He doesn't trust the boy. Skinner thinks the boy is toying with him. Skinner thinks the boy is trying to deceive him, possibly because he wants to steal the restaurant from him. I don't think he wants me to, Mr. Luthor. All right, Luthor, where's the gas pellet? Somewhere. <laughs> it's in the back of my mind, actually. <laughs> it's a little idea I was toying with. Is that how a warped brain like yours gets its kicks? In this clip, Superman is talking with Lex Luthor. Luther has devised a plan using gas pellets that could kill many innocent people. Luther says that it's an idea that he's toying with. Luther is saying that the pellets are a part of an idea that he's considering. You're awkward. You're clumsy. They can see how desperate you are. You know this. You said it yourself. Look, don't go by that girl tonight. She was nothing. I was toying with her. Well, face it, Alan, you may be very sweet, but you're not sexy. In this clip, Alan is talking with his dead wife about a woman he dated. Alan is imagining the conversation. Alan tells her that he was just toying with the woman that he dated. Alan means that he wasn't really serious about the woman and was just playing around in the relationship. Great work. Let's move on to the next phrase. Our next phrase is the idiom, for a living. The meaning of this idiom is, to have as one's job. A way a person can support themselves financially. An example of this idiom is, some people go on the internet to enjoy themselves, but I work on the internet for a living. Excellent, now let's look at some clips from movies that provide examples of this idiom. Glad you find it humorous. Let's go. Two dollars, that's all you're gonna leave? 
That's 15%. That's 13%. These people depend on tips for a living. In this clip, Jack, a private detective, is on a train with the Duke, a rather nice criminal. When Jack doesn't leave a 15% tip, the Duke reminds him that the service people depend on tips for a living. The Duke is explaining to Jack that the service people need this 15% tip to be able to support themselves financially. Watch your kids going! How many times I have to tell you? Oh, this past your bedtime! Go on, go on! Okay. Hey, 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 what are you kids up to? Well, that looks pretty good. You guys should do this for a living! In this clip, a group of young fish decide to paint the outside of an old snail shell. After originally being angry, the snail suddenly realizes that the shell is beautiful and says to the young fish, you guys should do this for a living. The old crab is saying that the young fish are talented at painting and that maybe they should do this as a job. We're aware of exactly what you, you said it, sitting around. Damn. It's a dangerous story for this paper. What if your boys get it wrong? Then it's our ass, isn't it? All right, we all have to go out and work for a living. Yeah. All right, <laughs> In this clip, a group of managers of a newspaper are talking about a big story that they're working on. They're saying that if they make a mistake on this article, they could all lose their jobs and have to work for a living. These are people that love their jobs, so it does not feel like real work. However, if they lose their jobs, they may have to look for jobs that they don't enjoy to support themselves financially. These are villains, Amanda. What makes you think you can control them? Because getting people to act against their own self-interest for the national security of the United States is what I do for a living. In this clip, Amanda Waller, an intelligence officer, is talking with two government officials. She is explaining that managing difficult people is what she does for a living. Amanda is saying that managing difficult people is the main purpose of her job and the reason that the government pays her money to support herself financially. That's terrific. Let's move on to the next phrase. This is the idiom, none of your business. The meaning of this idiom is, we use this to tell someone that this is private information and should not be asked about. An example of this idiom is, I'm not going to answer your question because it is personal and it's none of your business. Outstanding. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this idiom. Mm. Hello, Helen. Hello, Marge. Why, Homer Simpson, here to give your marriage a little spit shine? None of your business, Flanders. Uh, say, uh, Reverend, are we going to get a chance to do any fishing? Oh, no, I'm afraid not. In this clip, Homer and Marge are going to a marriage counseling meeting. One of the people at the meeting, Flanders, asks Homer if he's trying to improve his marriage. Homer tells him, it's none of your business. Homer is telling Flanders that he should not be asking him personal questions like that. It's not your money, it's my money. What money? You can keep it, though, because you got to pay off your debts. But you and Pots, you're going to have to work a couple of weekends in the store. Right? What this? It's none of your business, Joni. Why not? I'm one of the family. In this clip, Howard Cunningham is talking to his son, Richie. Howard has just helped his son win back some money from people who had cheated him. Joni, the daughter, wants to know what is happening, but Howard says, it's none of your business. He is telling her that this issue is private and doesn't involve her. I'll be in the other room if you need me, sir. Excuse me. What's the matter with that? Well, listen, I... I don't know, it's really none of my business. Your wife's none of your business? <laughs> you don't understand. In this clip, Joe is talking with Betty about his wife, who is acting crazy. Betty asks Joe what is happening. Since Joe really doesn't know his wife, he says, it's really none of my business. 
Although Betty won't understand, Joe is saying that he really doesn't know his wife, and it's personal and private information that he doesn't want to get involved with. You're doing great. Let's move on to the next phrase. This is the idiom, make sense. The meaning of this idiom is, to have a clear meaning and be easy to understand. It is sensible. An example of this idiom is, thank you for explaining that to me. Now it makes sense. Great. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this idiom. Isn't it? Snake, buddy, who made the plan to begin with? You did. So I'm the one who sticks to the plan the most, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. In this clip, Snake is talking to Wolf as they're preparing to go to sleep. Snake is concerned about Wolf not following the plan that they've agreed upon. Wolf tells him that it is his plan and that he always follows the plan. Snake thinks about this and says, that makes sense. Snake is saying that Wolf is speaking logically. When Wolf talks with Snake, everything that Wolf says seems reasonable and, as a result, Snake feels less worried. Anything with a strong color could work as a stain. Printer ink, food coloring, coffee. No thanks. I'll find a node closer to the surface once you can biopsy. That makes sense. That makes sense? I said it first. In this clip, Dr. House is suggesting ways to examine Kate, who he suspects of having cancer. He suggests using another form of stain to identify the node on Kate's body. Wilson listens to Dr. House and says, that makes sense. He is saying that House's suggestion is reasonable. It's gotta be hers, right? What do you mean? I mean, she's gotta be the Black Badger. It's the only thing that makes sense. I mean, she's had access to the encryption code, and she's so hot and bothered about putting this whole thing on you. It's gotta be her. In this clip, Calvin is explaining to Bob why he thinks Harris is the evil Black Badger. After Calvin explains his reasons, he says that it's the only thing that makes sense. Calvin is saying that his theory that Harris is the Black Badger is both reasonable and logical. Let's move on to the next phrase. This is the idiom, point of view. The meaning of this idiom is, to have an opinion. A way of thinking about something. An example of this idiom is, okay, I really do understand what you're saying, but I happen to have a different point of view. Excellent. Now let's watch some movie clips that provide examples of this idiom. We're thieves, Dad. And what we're stealing is, let's face it, garbage. It isn't stealing if no one wants it. If no one wants it, why are we stealing it? We are let's just say we have different points of view. <laughs> this much I knew. In this clip, Remy is talking to his father about who they are. Remy says that they are thieves that steal garbage. His father says that they are not thieves because people don't want this food and they're throwing it away. Remy concludes that he and his dad have different points of view. Remy is saying that he and his father look at their situation differently. They have different opinions. I mean, it's not like the money belongs to anybody. That would be one point of view. Yeah. Except it's not a point of view shared by the ATF. Once we make this evidence, it belongs to us. In this clip, Ray is a narcotics agent who is talking with Jackie Brown. Jackie is asking Ray if he is ever tempted to steal some of the money that he is using to catch criminals. Ray explains that one point of view would be that it would be easy to steal the money and nobody would get hurt. However, he also explains that the government has another point of view that this money belongs to the government. When they refer to point of view, they're talking about ways of looking at the situation, different opinions. Just do your job, but never forget what he is. 
And what is that? Oh, he's a monster. Pure psychopath. So rare to capture one alive. From a research point of view, Lecter is our most prized asset. In this clip, Dr. Chilton is describing the psychopath, Hannibal Lecter, to Agent Starling. Dr. Chilton says that from a research point of view, Lecter is their most prized asset. Dr. Chilton is saying that if you consider Lecter from a medical perspective, Lecter is very important because it's rare to capture such a man. They hope to learn how he thinks so that they can understand psychopaths more. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is work in progress. The meaning of this phrase is a project that is not finished. This could actually relate to many different things. For example, a song could be a work in progress if it is incomplete. A person might say, this song is sounding great, but it's a work in progress. We'll have to see how it is when it's finished. A person can also be a work in progress if someone's skills are being developed. A coach might say, someday Jeff is going to be a great surfer, but he's still a work in progress. We will see how he develops in the next year. Another example of this phrase is, we're currently working on a marketing plan, but it's a work in progress. We expect to finish it next week. Another way to say this is, we're working on a marketing plan, but at the moment, we haven't finished it yet. To summarize, a work in progress is something that is being developed or suggested that is not yet complete. Great! Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. Hey, why aren't I up there? You can be on ours. You fit right in. Thanks. Of course, it's still a work in progress. A few rough edges here and there. In this clip, Manny has built a playground for his baby. He tells Ellie that the project is a work in progress, which means that he is continuing to make improvements. Since Ellie has not given birth yet, Manny knows that he has more time to continue building the playground. Huh? How's it going? What? No, it's going great, man. It's great. Uh, it did look a little rough, you know? A little rough? The board looked a little rough. It's a work in progress, bro. You think it's good enough for the big waves? In this clip, Big Z is trying to teach Cody how to make a surfboard. The narrator of the movie tells Cody that the surfboard looks kind of rough. This means that he thinks the surfboard is not good. Cody gets angry and says it's a work in progress. Cody is saying that he's not finished with the board and that it will look good when it's completed. It's so chewy. No, no, I feel like Bobby. This is not working. Yeah, no, this isn't working. But don't worry, it's a work in progress, and you're my brother. I will never let you be embarrassed. In this clip, Daniel, who is dressed up as an elderly woman, is talking with his brother, Frank. Daniel says that the disguise is not working. Frank agrees and says, don't worry, this is a work in progress. Frank is saying that putting on the makeup is a process and it will take time to do it properly. However, Frank is confident that if they continue working, they will eventually succeed. God bless you. I think we're going to have to do the entire phase. Oh, are these your paintings? Oh, that's just uh, a work in progress. No, no, this is, this is beautiful. Mm. Thank you. What a majestic mountain range. <laughs> it's an old woman in a hat. Right. In this clip, Jeremy and Beat go back to Bee's house. Jeremy notices a painting that is located on the patio. Bee tells him that the painting is a work in process. Bee is saying that she is continuing to work on the painting and that it is not yet finished. Jeremy thought the painting was of a mountain, but it was actually of an old woman. It's probably not a good painting. Great. 
Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is figure of speech. The meaning of this phrase is a phrase that should not be taken literally. There are many kinds of figures of speech, including similes, metaphors, and idioms. An example of a simile is, he was as sick as a dog. If you simply look at these words, it doesn't seem logical. However, in English, everyone knows that when someone says, as sick as a dog, it simply means, very sick. It's a figure of speech. An example of a metaphor is, time is money. This means that if you aren't using your time wisely, you are losing money. Obviously, time is not the same thing as money. It's a figure of speech. There are many other kinds of figures of speech as seen in this chart. It just means that you are combining certain words together as a way of saying something else. Almost all of the phrases discussed in these videos are figures of speech. To summarize, a figure of speech is an expression that uses words to mean something different from their ordinary meaning. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. You must have called shimmy in our highway a little bit. Yeah, you got mud in your tires. I got mud in my tires? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. How do you get mud into the tires? Oh, no, you see, that's just a figure of speech. See, the mud gets around the inside of the wheel, throws the balance off. In this clip, Vinny, a man from New York City, has just arrived in Alabama a state located in the Deep South. Vinny had noticed that his car was shimmering on the highway and a local resident tells him that he has mud in his tires. Vinny is confused because he doesn't understand how a person can get mud inside tires. The man explains that it's just a figure of speech. The man is saying that although people say mud in your tires, they actually mean mud inside the wheels of the car. A figure of speech is simply a way of saying something that, when taken literally, has a different meaning. You never take us alive! They just did take us alive, Alvin. It's a figure of speech, Simon. Instead of criticizing me, why not use your big brain to think of a way out? In this clip, the three chipmunks have been captured. Alvin screams, you'll never take us alive. Simon tells Alvin that they just did. Take them alive. Alvin says that he was just using a figure of speech. Alvin is saying that this is just a phrase that someone says in this kind of situation and should not be taken literally. Can, can we slow down a little? I'm dying here. It was just a figure of speech. In this clip, Sid is traveling with his friends, but he is moving slowly because he is very tired. He asks his friends to slow down. He says that he's dying. Some vultures soon arrive. Sid tells the vultures that although he used the word dying, it was just a figure of speech. Sid is saying that people use the word dying when they are feeling tired and that they're not actually dying. Fantastic. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, let's face it. The meaning of this phrase is, we use this to say that something is true and cannot be denied. An example of this would be if you said, let's face it, if you want to retire to a beautiful tropical island, you need to save a lot of money. Another example would be, let's face it, if you want to be extremely healthy, you will need to start eating healthier foods and exercising more. One final example of this phrase is, Let's face it, teacher, most of the students will not be coming to class because they're at the big football game. To summarize, 
Let's face it as something you would say before you said something unpleasant, but was true. Excellent. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. You came back for me. Well, yeah, I came back for you. You know, I have strong feelings for you. Let's face it, you're, you're, <clears throat> you're beautiful. I, a little combative at times, but I think we can. In this clip, Z, a low-class worker ant, is talking to Bala, an ant princess. Bala has been captured and asks Z why he is trying to help her. Z says, let's face it, you're beautiful. Z is saying that it's obviously true that the princess is a beautiful ant. You know that, you know that. Toronto's gonna get to me before I get to any witness protection program. Do me a favor. Don't pretend you care about me. It really insults my intelligence. I mean, let's face it. The only important thing about me to you is getting your money. In this clip, the Duke is talking with Jack, a private detective. Jack talks to the Duke like a friend, but this annoys the Duke. He says, let's face it, you only care about making money by turning me into the police. The Duke is saying that Jack should not try to act like a friend when the actual truth is that his only real interest is making money. Please try not to move. Hey. What's going on here? Let's face it, this is not the worst thing you've caught me doing. Are those bullet holes? In this clip, Tony Stark is getting some repairs done on his suit by a robot. Pepper, Tony's assistant, walks in and notices the bullet holes in it. She stares at him. He says, let's face it, this is not the worst thing that you've caught me doing. Tony is joking with Pepper by saying that it is obviously true that she has caught him doing much more embarrassing things while working for him. Great work. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, make yourself at home. The meaning of this phrase is, to encourage someone to feel relaxed and comfortable. An example of this phrase is, welcome everybody. It's so nice to see you. Come on in and make yourself at home. It's often said at holidays or when having parties. Welcome. Please sit down and make yourself at home. However, please note that when we say this phrase, we are not suggesting that you act exactly like you would in your home. If you went to visit someone, took ice cream out of their freezer, and sat down to watch a movie, the people living at the house might not be happy. To summarize, make yourself at home means to relax and make yourself comfortable in someone else's home. Very good. Now let's look at some movie clips for examples of this phrase. Here we are. Then use a boot. Oh, it's mine, dear. I'm a messy house guest. Well, uh, just make yourself at home. I'll be right back. He'll be back. In this clip, Daniel receives a visit from Mrs. Selner, a home services inspector. Mrs. Selner wants to inspect the home to ensure it is safe for children to live in. Daniel, who is disguised as an old woman, tells her to make herself at home. This basically means that Daniel is telling Mrs. Selner to relax because she is a guest at his house. Please understand that Daniel is not saying that Mrs. Selner can really act as if she were actually in her home. If Mrs. Selner were to go into the kitchen, get some snacks, and sat down to watch a movie, Daniel would be shocked. Him. Don't be afraid, I'll be right there. Yeah, we'll put you up in the Northwest Tower. That's the guest room. 
It's a bit drafty in the winter, but in this blazing hot weather, it's the best room in the house. <laughs> oh, yes. Very lovely indeed. <sighs> so just make yourself at home, Marvin. In this clip, Sir Ector has agreed to give Martin, a magician, a free room at the castle. Since the room is free, it's not very nice. However, Sir Ector says, make yourself at home. Sir Ector is basically saying, relax and enjoy the time that you're staying here. Oh, look, why don't you all sit down? Here, there are a lot of seats over there. Just make yourself at home. George, can I see you a minute? In this clip, many angry customers of the bank have come to talk with George. George says that he will talk with them, but first he says, make yourself at home. Once again, this phrase is simply a polite way of greeting someone and means, you are welcome here. Please relax. That's terrific. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, check it out. The meaning of this phrase is, to look at or get more information about something. An example of this phrase is, hey, check it out. I'm higher than the clouds. Okay, now here's an example of this phrase where the meaning is to examine or investigate. All right, honey, now you go into that cave and check it out. If I hear a bear chewing on your arm, I'll just wait for you out here. Okay? One last example is about when you buy something new and want to show it off. Hey, check it out. I just bought this car. And before you ask, no. The girl in the back did not come with the car. To summarize, check it out is used when you are showing something to someone or when you want them to investigate something. Great. Now let's watch some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. Welcome to my crib. The good life, the way the other half lives. Check it out. I got my 60 inch high def flat screen TV with six speakers surround, CD, DVD, PlayStation hookup, and an eight track player for the. In this clip, Oscar is talking to the TV camera. Oscar wants everyone to think he's successful, so he says, check out my TV, CD, DVD, and other things. Oscar is simply telling people to look at and admire the things that he owns. He really wants people to respect him. You, ten people witnessed a free-floating, full-torso vaporous apparition. It blew books off shelves from 20 feet away and scared the socks off some poor librarian. I'm very excited. I'm very pleased. I want you to get right down there. Check it out. And In this clip, Ray is telling Peter about the discovery of some ghosts. Peter is more interested in a pretty girl that is in the office and tells Ray to go down there and check it out. Peter is telling Ray to go and see if there really is a ghost and then come back and talk with him. Don't you know how to knock Flemwad? Check it out, old man Marley. Who is he? You ever heard of South Bend Shovel Slayer? In this clip, Buzz tells Kevin and a friend to check it out. Buzz is telling the other boys to look out the window at Mr. Marley an old man shoveling snow. Check it out basically means to look at or to investigate. You're doing great. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is on the line. There's more than one meaning to this phrase, but for this video, the meaning is talking on the phone or waiting to talk on the phone. An example of this phrase is Hey boss, here are the reports you asked for. Also, our lawyer is on the line. He wants to talk with you. Okay, here's one more example. 
Let's go, Harry. Headquarters is on the line, and apparently some bear is chewing on a guy's arm. However, we are being told that his girlfriend is okay. To summarize, on the line means to be talking on the phone or waiting to talk to someone while on hold. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. She said that he was in her house having drinks. Oh, look, I don't care where it happened. What happened is what counts. When we asked him about it, he said he forgot the entire incident. Yeah. Ken Clausen on the line. Ken Clausen on the line. Jesus. In this clip, Ben is telling Carl and Bob that Ken Clausen is on the line. Ben is simply telling Carl and Bob that Ken is waiting on the phone to talk with him. This phrase can have different meanings, but in this situation, it means to be waiting or talking on the phone. What the hell was that? Were we cleared to go in there? No, sir. They were using human shields. We never got the green light. Well, if they're state, they're going to be all over this. Get those bars up! You got a bogey. Was an Air Force? Oh, sir, CIA on the line. I've got Langley on the line. You want to know if it's us? No, it definitely is not us, sir. In this clip, there has been an attack and a group of military soldiers are trying to determine what happened. One person says, CIA on the line, and another person says, Langley on the line. They are talking about their bosses from different locations that are calling them to ask what is happening. Once again, on the line means that somebody is on the phone. They don't get... That's correct. All right, so I'm counting on you to help me help your son. Thank you very much. Put him back on the line, please. All right, Reggie, we're clear on this. You got it? In this clip, Wardell is waiting to talk with Max. Max is talking with the mother of a criminal. Max tells her that he's trying to help her son. He then tells her to put her son on the line. Max is telling the woman that he wants her to give the phone to her son. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, fire away. The meaning of this phrase is, this is used to give someone permission to ask questions or to speak. An example of this phrase is, okay students, I'm done teaching today. If you have any questions, fire away. Start asking your questions. Another example of this phrase is, okay, let's begin the interview. Are you ready, John? Absolutely, Martha. Fire away. Start asking your questions. To summarize, fire away is used to tell someone they may begin asking questions. Great. Now let's watch some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. Excuse me. Babe, absolutely far away. Mia, Mia, would you turn it down? In this clip, Sarah gets a call from her mentally ill brother, Michael. Though Sarah is very lonely and has an opportunity to date a handsome man in the office, Carl, she is constantly interrupted by the demands from Michael. Here, she gets a call from Michael and she quickly says, Fire away. Sarah is saying, go ahead and start asking questions. Uh, I'll just fire away then, shall I? Right. Uh, the film's great. In this clip, William is pretending to be a reporter from Horse and Hound magazine. He knows that he's expected to interview Anna, a famous movie actress, and he asks her if he should fire away. William is asking whether he should start asking Anna questions about the recent movie that she just completed. 
Fire away simply means to start or begin. Uh, oh, sorry. Well, approving an attorney from out of state is a pretty informal matter. I just have a few questions. Okay, fire away, Judge. Where'd you go to law school? Brooklyn Academy of Law. In this clip, Vinny, a new lawyer, is being interviewed by a judge. Since he is not from the state of Alabama, the judge just has a few informal questions that he would like to ask. Vinny is ready for the judge to begin asking questions, and he says, fire away, judge. He's telling the judge to start asking questions. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, piece of cake. The meaning of this phrase is, something that is easy to do. Simple. An example of this phrase is, what? You want me to roll over? Ah, it's a piece of cake. Well, rolling over was easy. But getting up may not be so easy. Could you give me a hand? Another example of this phrase is, Going up the ramp is going to be a piece of cake for me. Oh please, please tell me that nobody took a video of that. This boy thought going up the ramp would be very easy, but he was wrong. One last example of this phrase is, I don't know why mom was worried about me collecting shells. It's a piece of cake. Whoa! What's with the moving water? Yikes! To summarize, piece of cake is something that is very easy to do. Alright, now let's take a look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. T minus 30 oh. seconds. Oh no! Wait! <gasps> Hold on! Go, Tim! Get your parents out of here. <laughs> In this clip, Jim is talking with the boss baby. The boss baby is really an adult, but in this scene, he changes back into a baby. Jim is trying to escape the building and tells the boss baby to jump down. Since the boss baby is now a real baby, he is unsure. Jim tells him that jumping down is a piece of cake. Jim is saying that doing this is very easy. In this clip, Bruce and Andy are taking many dogs out for a walk. Andy is worried that trying to walk so many dogs may be difficult. Bruce is not worried and says that it will be a piece of cake. Bruce is saying that it should be very easy to do. Now I just gotta figure out how to get in there. With the right rod and tackle, I could cast you up into that unfinished part of the factory. Should be a piece of cake. Hmm? Dad, let's go fishing. In this clip, Flint is trying to get up to the factory where his friends are being held captive. Flint's father says that he can use his fishing equipment to send Flint up there. He says that it should be a piece of cake. Flint's father is saying that sending his son up to the factory using fishing equipment should be very easy. Where's your house, then? Right now, let me see. Uh, Inverness Gardens, Vicarage Gate, Kensington High Street. Try and go left. That's it. Now go right. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be tricky. Oh, yeah. And everything else has been a piece of cake. In this clip, Rita is trying to help Roddy get back to his home in Kensington. As they are floating down looking for Kensington, Roddy says that finding his home is going to be difficult, tricky. Rita says, and everything else has been a piece of cake? Rita is being sarcastic 
because Rita and Roddy have been through many difficult situations before this. Great. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is on the road. The meaning of this phrase is traveling away from home or the usual place of work. An example of this phrase is Tom is taking some time off of work to drive through the mountains. He should be on the road now. This means that Tom is currently traveling through the mountains. Another example is, I don't enjoy traveling, but I do like going on the road riding my motorcycle. It's so nice riding my bike out in the country. Here, the person is saying that they enjoy traveling on their motorcycle. The last example is, we really enjoyed the balloon festival, but it's time to get back on the road. We've got to get back to LA tomorrow. Here they are saying that they need to start traveling back to LA. To summarize, on the road means traveling to different places. Okay, now let's take a look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. The best young arm I've seen in 30 years. You've been around. You're smart. You're professional. We want you to mature the kid. We want you to room with him on the road. Stay on his case all year. In this clip, the coach and his assistant are asking Crash Davis to help develop a young rookie baseball player. The coach wants Crash to room with him on the road. The coaches are asking Crash to be his roommate when the team is traveling for games played in other cities. Therefore, when the team travels to other cities, Crash and the young baseball player will stay in the same hotel room. Vince just asked us to go to New Mexico and Texas with him. This is a great idea. Vincent, is this true? We all go together? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a great idea if we all hopped in a car and spent a few days on the road together. In this clip, Vincent has just decided to take his twin brother, Julius, and his girlfriend, Linda, on a trip. Linda tells her sister, Marnie, that she can go too. Julius is very happy that they will all go on the road together. Julius, Linda, and Marnie are very excited and happy to be traveling together, but Vincent is not really happy. Once again, on the road means to be traveling away from home. And uh, what's your name, son? Well, I'm Bart Simpson. Who the hell are you? <laughs> I'm Dave Shutton. I'm an investigative reporter who's on the road a lot. And uh, I must say that in my day, we didn't talk that way to our elders. Well, this is my day, and we do, sir. In this clip, Dave, an investigative reporter, is talking to young Bart Simpson and his sister. Dave tells the kids that he's on the road a lot. Dave is saying that he travels a lot doing research on stories that he writes for newspapers. Fantastic. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is water under the bridge. The meaning of this phrase is it refers to something that happened in the past and is no longer important. An example of this phrase is my husband and I had some serious problems last year, but that's all water under the bridge. This means that those problems are in the past and forgotten. Another example is, our marketing team had all kinds of problems last year, but that's all water under the bridge at this point. This means that the problems that they had last year are in the past and no longer exist. The last example is, Martha and I were recently talking about breaking up, but that's all water under the bridge now. Our relationship is better than ever. This means that although they did have some serious problems, that's all in the past and things are going very well now. To summarize, water under the bridge refers to past events, especially disagreements, that are forgiven and forgotten. All right. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. I'm awfully sorry. A divorce is a terrible thing, isn't it? Oh, it can be if you haven't got the right solicitor. Oh, now that's yeah. true. 
But sometimes it can drag out for months. I was lucky. Snip cut and I was free. <laughs> oh, but of course that's all water under the bridge now, isn't it? In this clip, Felix is talking with the Pigeon sisters about the subject of divorce. A divorce is when a husband and wife break up. After talking a while, Gwen says that their divorces are all water under the bridge now. Gwen is saying that their divorces are all events that happened in the past and should be forgotten. I'm sorry, by the way, Professor, about earlier today, our, our misunderstanding. Oh, not at all. All water under the bridge, you know. Correct? Oh, I expect you're tired of it after all these years. In this clip, Harry is having a problem with Weasley, who has been given a love potion. Harry asks Professor Slughorn to help reverse the love potion. During the conversation, Harry apologizes for a misunderstanding that they had earlier. The professor says, all water under the bridge. The professor is saying that Harry doesn't need to worry about this and that it's all in the past and is forgotten. You mean beyond past -pism? He's fragile. Very fragile. Huh? I did not know that. Well, it's all water under the bridge. And we do under the next round round. In this clip, the dude is talking with Walter about an event that happened in the bowling alley with Smokey. The dude tells Walter that he was wrong and shouldn't have threatened Smokey. He tells Walter that Smokey has some emotional problems. Walter says that it's all water under the bridge now. Walter is saying that the earlier events are in the past and should be forgotten. He only wants to think about bowling. Great work. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is hanging by a thread. The meaning of this phrase is to be in a very dangerous situation. An example of this phrase is what this dog is thinking. This darn cat doesn't know it, but its life is hanging by a thread right now. It's an annoying little thing. The dog is saying that the little cat may not live very long if it keeps annoying him. Another example of this phrase is, our season is hanging by a thread. We've got to win our last three games of the year and we're behind two to nothing in this game. This means that the team must conquer a very difficult challenge if they want to reach the playoffs. The last example of this phrase is, my job, my relationship, my health, are all hanging by a thread at the moment because of alcohol. I'm very stressed. The man is saying that due to his problems with alcohol, his life is dangerously close to being destroyed. To summarize, hanging by a thread is to be very close to failing, dying, or resulting in a bad outcome. All right. Now let's take a look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. Hey, what should I do now? Kill it. Now? No. Nothing in the kitchen. Are you mad? Do you know what would happen to us if anyone knew we are the rats in our kitchen? They'd close us down. Our reputation is hanging by a thread as it is. Take it away from here. In this clip, Linguini catches a rat in the kitchen of the restaurant where he works. The chef tells him to kill it. Linguini asks, no? The chef says, no, not in the restaurant. He says that their reputation is hanging by a thread. The chef is saying that their reputation has already declined a lot and that many people would like to close their restaurant. The chef wants Linguini to remove the rat from the restaurant quickly. Help you. Help me. Help you. I'm sorry. You are hanging on by a very thin thread. <laughs>
In this clip, Jerry Maguire, a sports agent, is talking to his only client, Rod Tidwell, a football player. Rod is a difficult client that wants a new contract from his team. Jerry begs him to be less demanding. Rod can see that Jerry is in trouble. He knows that he has no other clients. He tells Jerry he's hanging by a thread. Rod is saying that he can see that Jerry is desperate and is close to losing his business. He is happy because he knows that Jerry must do everything to take care of him, his only client. Hey guys, what I miss, what I miss? Giselle's hanging by a thread. Oh, good, I hate her. Then you're not invited to our wedding. Here you go. In this clip, Penny comes into the room and asks what is happening on a reality TV show everybody is watching. Howard says that one of the contestants, Giselle, is hanging by a thread. Howard is saying that the contestant, Giselle, is close to losing and very close to being removed from the show. That's terrific. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, in the middle of something. The meaning of this phrase is, to be busy with an activity. An example of this phrase is, I know she wants to play with me right now, but hey, I'm in the middle of watching Tom and Jerry. The cat is saying that it does not want the woman to play with it right now because it is busy watching a cartoon. Another example of this phrase is, oh man, I was right in the middle of playing golf when this rainstorm came along. This means that the man was currently playing golf when it started to rain. He was forced to stop playing. The last example of this phrase is, I'm so sorry. I can't talk to you right now. I'm in the middle of a work project right now. I'll call you back. The man is saying that he is very busy working on a project and cannot talk at the moment. To summarize, in the middle of something means to be busy doing something. All right, now let's look at some movie clips that show examples of this phrase. And that blank tape. I need it, the one you erased yesterday. Will you excuse me for a second? I'm right in the middle of something, Ray. Uh, I need a little more time with this subject. Could you come back in an hour, hour and a half? In this clip, Ray is telling Peter about some ghosts that have been sighted. Peter tells Ray that he's right in the middle of something and can't go with him to check out the ghosts. Peter is telling Ray that he is busy with a subject and can't go with him. However, Peter is really only interested in pursuing a pretty girl that is in the office. The treatment indicate... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were in the middle of something. It's a conference room with glass walls. In this clip, Wilson is in a meeting about how to treat a patient. Dr. House walks into the room and says that he didn't realize Wilson was in the middle of something. Dr. House is saying that he didn't realize that Dr. Wilson was busy with a meeting. So you can clear out your personal belongings. What about the, um, what I'm currently working on? I'm in the middle of something that... The firm has worked out its transition plan and is prepared to move forward. In this clip, an investment firm in New York is laying off many of its employees. Eric Dale is seen here talking with two women who are telling him that he no longer has a job at the company. Eric tells the women that he's in the middle of something, but the women interrupt him. Eric is trying to explain that he's been busy working on an important project and wants to tell the women about it. You're doing great. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, back on track. The meaning of this phrase is, to return to the right path. To return to the right direction. 
An example of this phrase is, while traveling in Europe, my boyfriend and I got lost, but luckily, I had a map, so we were able to get back on track. This means that although we got lost, a map that I had helped us locate the direction we needed to go in. Another example of this phrase is, well, just think. A year ago, I was broke, living out of my car. However, I met a beautiful woman that got my life back on track. I want to thank her so much. This man is saying that he's very thankful to his girlfriend for helping him believe in himself and improving his life. The last example of this phrase is, my son was having all kinds of problems at school last year, but he's back on track and I'm very happy. To summarize, back on track means to return to the right direction after a mistake or failure. All right. Now let's take a look at some movie clips that show examples of this phrase. Ah! We're gonna win this thing tomorrow, so I can feel it. We'll finally have our lives back on track. Hey, Mike. You know, you've given me a lot of really great tips. I'd love to return the favor sometime. In this clip, Mike is talking with Sully about the big scare contest that they're involved in. Mike is feeling confident about their team and predicts that they're going to win and get their lives back on track. Mike is saying that although they've had some problems recently, winning this contest will return them to the right path and get their lives back to normal. Hey, Mr. Hormone, check out this. Ice skaters. God, look at them. Hey, fellas, that's what we need, man. One night with some of these skaters, we can get right back on track. Yeah, right. We just need a night off to end our losing streak. In this clip, there is a group of baseball players that have been losing many games recently. They notice a group of ice skaters on a nearby bus and say that spending some time with some pretty girls could get them back on track. The players are saying that if they could socialize with these beautiful girls, it could help return them to the path of winning baseball games again. I just don't think we can make it work. We can get back on track and everything's going to be great. You just be nice. And I'm being nice. And just because we're two nice people doesn't mean we should stay together. In this clip, Ben is trying to convince Allison to not give up on their relationship. Ben says that he feels that they can get back on track. Ben is saying that although they've had some problems, he thinks they can return to their normal relationship if they continue to try to understand each other more. Allison does not agree. She wants to break up with him. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, snap out of it. The meaning of this phrase is, to tell someone to start being attentive. To tell someone to recover from a negative or undesirable situation. An example of this phrase is, hey, come on guys, snap out of it. I want to play. We will have plenty of time to sleep when we are old. It's play time. This puppy is asking his brothers and sisters to wake up and play. He doesn't want to sleep. Another example of this phrase is, hey John, snap out of it. Get back to work. Here, the teacher is telling John to wake up and start studying. The last example of this phrase is, come on Karen. I know that you've got your heart broken, but snap out of it. There are a lot more men out there in the world. Here, a friend is telling the girl to stop being sad and depressed about the breakup of a relationship. To summarize, snap out of it means to force yourself to stop feeling sad or depressed. It can also mean to stop being lazy or sleepy. All right, now let's take a look at some movie clips that show examples of this phrase. <laughs> okay, that's just weird. <laughs>
In this clip, Buck, Crash, and Eddie are riding on a flying dinosaur. The flying dinosaur crashes into another dinosaur and loses consciousness. Buck tries desperately to revive the dinosaur before slapping it and saying, snap out of it. Buck is telling the dinosaur to become alert and be conscious again. Buck needs the dinosaur to start flying again before they crash. It never fails to get in the bath and there's a rub at the lamp. Hello? Al? <gasps> Al! Kid! Snap out of it! Oh, you can't cheat on this one. I can't help you unless you make a wish. You in this clip, the genie comes out of his lantern only to find that Aladdin has been tied up and is unconscious. The genie wants to help Aladdin, but he needs to hear Aladdin request his help. He cannot help him if Aladdin doesn't wish for him to do so. The genie says, snap out of it. The genie wants Aladdin to regain consciousness and be alert and awake again. Not the one who's been flaking out at work. Now, I, I know you had this religious experience or whatever the hell that was, but you better snap out of it and get your shit together. You're gonna get canned. Yeah, and, uh, and I, listen. In this clip, Peter is talking with Michael about working at Inetech Corporation. Michael tells Peter that he better snap out of it or he's going to lose his job. Michael is telling Peter that he should stop his bad behavior or he is going to lose his job. This is ridiculous. Damn it, Sheldon, snap out of it! You're a physicist. You belong at the university doing research, not hiding in your room. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, go with the flow. The meaning of this phrase is, to do, or agree with what other people are doing. Or to agree with what other people are thinking and saying. An example of this phrase is, many people are obsessed with making money and having more power. I'm not. I just want to go with the flow and enjoy life. Another example of this phrase is, I watch these crazy humans rushing here, rushing there, at the office, going to the gym, cutting grass, going shopping, fixing the house, washing clothes. That's not the life for me. I just enjoy going with the flow. Lying on this rock is the most stressful thing I'm going to do all day. This cat is saying that he doesn't want a complicated, stressful life. The last example of this phrase is, when I sit down to watch TV with my boyfriend, I just let him decide what show to watch. I don't really care what show is on. I just go with the flow. The most enjoyment I get during these times is simply spending time with him. This woman is saying that she is an easygoing, agreeable person that is more focused on the love that she feels for her boyfriend than what is on TV. To summarize, go with the flow means to not try to control what happens, to be accepting and agreeable. Great! Let's look at some clips that provide examples of this phrase. Oh, I don't care. You know me, I just go with the flow. <laughs> Beach, public pool, they both sound awesome. <laughs> In this clip, Sheldon is dreaming about swimming. He says that he doesn't mind where he swims. He can swim at the beach or in a public pool. He will just go with the flow. Sheldon is saying that he's willing to swim at either the beach or the pool. He's relaxed and willing to go to either place. His wife, Amy, is shocked to hear him say this because Sheldon does not usually go with the flow. 
I wish we could all live in the mountains at high altitude. That's where I see myself in five years. How about you? Oh, I agree. I just like to go with the flow. See where it leads me. Well, it's led you here. In this clip, Phil is trying to charm Rita into liking him. He tells her that he might like to live in the mountains. She likes hearing this. When he asks her where she wants to live, she says that she will just go with the flow. Rita is saying that she's not sure what the future will be for her, but that she will just go where life takes her. You're not supposed to end with ha. You're not? You're supposed to end with arg. Got it. Arg. Hey, that's great. Thanks. I just went with the flow. Late. In this clip, Tim and the boss baby are fighting pirates. When the boss baby yells during the fight, Tim stops everything and tells him that he can't say that. Tim says that he should say erg. The boss baby does it again. Tim says he did it great. The boss baby says he just went with the flow. The boss baby is saying that he just let his emotions lead him through the scene. He wasn't trying to act a certain way. He was just trying to let his emotions flow out naturally. Excellent work. You've completed the video. We've reviewed 50 idiomatic phrases. Remember, it's almost impossible memorizing all these phrases after viewing this video one time. So try to revisit this video when you have free time and refresh your memory regarding these phrases. Here is a list of all the phrases in this video. The next 50 phrases will be uploaded soon, so please subscribe so you can be notified whenever we upload new videos.